friend calls Temba and he says, I'm inviting you to a party tonight at my place. Oh, thank you. What should I bring? Asked Temba. And the friend says, absolutely nothing, just your happy face. And Temba cancelled. Good evening and welcome to talk with Rams. My name is Rams Mabote. We are live on Facebook, Instagram TV, and YouTube. We come to you every Monday, two Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. And on Tuesdays, we call it Opportunity Tuesday. Now, let me first start with a gripe before I go to the main opportunity. I'm not very particularly happy today. You know, we start Opportunity Tuesday with an opportunity for a small business to be profiled. So we give a small business a chance to be profiled. A lot of them write to us and ask for this opportunity. Anything between seven and 15 minutes, depending on what really, how strong the story is. And today we had lined up what we believe was a very interesting business to be interviewed and be profiled. And they went AWOL on us, completely AWOL. We've been trying for the last two hours to get them. They just disappeared. So many people want this opportunity. So many people would have used this opportunity. But somebody wasted it and they're not decent enough to say, oops, I'm not available. Or, oh, sorry, I caught the corona. I can't come to studio. Whatever it is, give us some light. Don't just disappear. But I won't shame them. I won't name them and I won't shame them. In fact, I won't even shut the door on them. This door remains open. Fix your ways. You are welcome back soon, but you're going to have to go back off the queue a bit. Uh, you're not coming into the front queue of the queue just as yet. We'll allow you back, but back off the queue. All is forgiven. So to our opportunity story, applications are now open for small, medium, and micro enterprises in the manufacturing, engineering services, and recyclables. So, hey, I, don't, I don't like these words, recyclables. You know these words are, are like tongue twisters, but yeah, recyclable sectors to join the Sasol Business Accelerator Program. Now, uh, I've been very lucky to find somebody at Sasol to drag them from the comfort of their home to speak to us about the program. And she's head of the program. She's head of the ESD program. Jablinde Ratsibe is our guest tonight to tell us more about this program. And I'm glad that I can also say she's a friend that I've known for about 30 years. Damn, Dimtala. Good evening to you, Jamie. Good evening. Are you well? I'm well, thanks, Ramson. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So the feature that we have before you, we call it the quickie, because it's a very quick interview with a small business. So when they cancel, I thought, if Jamie also cancels as we are dead, I'm going to have to speak alone <laughs> for 30 minutes. Thank God you didn't cancel on us, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. No, no we, we, we're here to serve. Thank you, thank you very much. So let's let's talk about the uh, the program, the business accelerator program. In uh, simple English, in two minutes, what is it all about? Um, the business accelerator program is a program that seeks to empower um, existing enterprises. So we're accelerating. We are not starting from scratch. Um, we would like those enterprises to achieve substantial growth. Um, we'll take them through a pace where. We look at um, what the gaps they have in their businesses. We um, have a, a program that is structured around their businesses where we then through periodical um, um, milestones check as to whether they have achieved what they need to achieve um, so that they can be marketable. They can be able to provide their services to bigger corporates like ours. Um, and they are able to, um, to be ready within a particular period. Uh, we're hoping that within a 24 month period, they can be ready to participate in various supply chains, including our supply chain. What happens in this incubation? You know, I, I'm, I'm a, I've spoken to a lot of people who run incubation programs and they will tell you that I'm a skeptic of incubators, not because I don't think they're good, but sometimes yeah. I worry about people who go into incubation and they don't want to come out as fully grown children on the other side. 
Yes, and, and I think that's why it worries us to constantly use the word small businesses because sometimes businesses just want to be small and they, and they don't grow. Um, the idea around uh, incubation, and I think, again, maybe to your point, that's why we're also trying to be more acceleration than incubation. It is, is, it is to, to assist a business in achieving their own milestones. So it's not about us defining what the business should achieve. It is about the business defining um, itself, understanding what the gaps they have. And ours is to really assist them where they need assistance. This could be technical assistance. So let's say for the sake, um, a business, somebody who was, is able to run a business um, and knows the fundamentals of a business, but they may need a boost in certain technical skills. Um, that's where we come in. We make sure that we've got the relevant expertise. We've got uh, the relevant um, consultants or companies that can assist them in that process. Or we do business training where we make sure that people understand the fundamentals of, of, of running a business. Um, most people start businesses from corporate um, and they think that they know how to run a business. When you are in a, when you're running a small business versus being in a corporate is basically two totally different environments. In your corporate, you may have your HR consultant. In the small business, you have to be the HR director. You also have to be the financial director. You have to be the safety director. And you also have to be the technical director. So it is really yeah. understanding as to um, what interventions are required for that particular business and ensure that we provide the necessary support to ensure that the business is running holistically and um, um, it is able to, to the business owner uh, specifically understands the fundamentals that um, they need to, to be able to run their business effectively. So the, 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 the program is really providing the necessary support to the business, but it is structured around that particular business's needs, as opposed to us saying, this is what you have to do. Is it a new program? It, it is a revised program. So we, we were initially uh, from 2016 running the program as Sasso Business Incubator, and we're targeting specifically the business is at grassroots level. But, but we realize that sometimes they need more time for them to be able to participate in supply chains like ours, um, take into account that we have very stringent safety requirements uh, because we're running a petrochemical uh, business. Um, so we have to make sure that uh, at, a, at a particular period that we are comfortable that those particular businesses can be able to participate in the opportunities that we have within Sasso. So we have then taken a view that says that let's look at businesses that are already existing. Uh, um, uh, people already have got an understanding of where their businesses are. They have an understanding in terms of exactly where their gaps are so that we're able to give them the necessary boost for them to be able to participate in the opportunities that you may have. So it is a new program as from the 1st of uh, July of 2020 as an accelerator program. So let's define this person you're looking for. You say they, they must be existent already. You have to, yeah. you want to accelerate them. Now I could yes. I could have just registered last week. Do I qualify? What are you looking for? You definitely will not qualify. We are looking for somebody who at least has been operating for six months. Um, this does not mean somebody who registered uh, the business and they, they had the paper seat in some way and they never ran the business. We will check that you have actually been operating. Uh, so we need you to operate for at least a period of six months. Um, we need you to be 51% black owned and above business. Um, we would ideally like to focus on the businesses who have the turnover that is less than 10 million. Um, uh, because I think that's where there they is a bigger need for, um, especially in the, in the areas that we operate in, to make sure that we provide the necessary support to the people that are still, still small, but, um, uh, but at least they know what they're doing. Um, so we need you to be 51% black owned. And they obviously, in this case, specific industries that we are targeting, industries in, in the engineering sector. We are looking at people that can offer engineering services, as you had mentioned. We're looking at people that can provide HVAC services. We're looking at people that operate businesses in the recyclables. We are all talking about um, the, the, the new renewable kind of um, economy now, where we have to make sure that we are running sustainable um, businesses, whether it's businesses or even at home, we have to make sure that 
recycle. It's not about destroying the, the planet. So those are the kind of businesses that we are looking for. Um, and obviously we want people that are passionate about what they're doing. Um, uh, you could run a business and it's, it's, it's almost like for you, it's, a, it's just for opportunities that become available. We are really, really interested on in people that are serious about ensuring the success of their own businesses. Now you also seem, or not seem, you, you have localized this uh, uh, in, in Sasolbeck and surrounding areas, notably Metsima Holungwate and Mpuleli. What's the, what's the rationale behind it? Yeah, as they say, charity begins at home. Uh, Sasolbeck is our home. Um, it is important for us to first look at the communities that are around us to make sure that we, we have the right impact. If we now start looking at the people that are in Johannesburg, I'm sure you know the number. You you already have an attitude towards incubators and people that are doing <laughs> business development. Um, so I think you, you have a number of these in Johannesburg. And we think that the people that are in the Johannesburg area have got um, opportunity um, that is available through different avenues. Whereas mm. the people that are in some of our fence line communities, as we call them, do not have the opportunities that seem to be available in Johannesburg. So we felt that it is important that we identify the business, small businesses that are within our communities first. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that as Sasso, we do not look at other areas. We do have um, some other programs that we run through virtual incubation, but specifically mm -hmm. on this one, we were looking at physical incubation. We thought that it is critical that we focus first within our own community. And then you say the successful applicants will be housed at the uh, incubator in, 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 in Sasselbeck. When, when you say housed, you know, one of the things, again, that I always ask about incubators is how do you manage to take the, uh, the entrepreneur from their day-to-day -day business into an incubation program? How, how flexible would this be to allow them to continue to trade while they're being uh, accelerated? Yeah, so the idea is for them to be to be trading. So we would like, I think one of the things that are critical for us is to ensure that um, SMEs do not rely on one company. Um, we, we, we have economic challenges that would find that if you were to lose a contract with one entity, then basically closes the company down. So mm. we like the idea of the SMEs being able to have different, to be, to be customer, to have different customers, um, to ensure that they're able to run their businesses sustainably. The reason why we are offering this opportunity is that there are some SMEs that do not have the relevant facilities. So you may be very good at what you're doing, but you do not have workshop facilities. You may be good at what you're doing, but sometimes you do not have Wi-Fi. So we are saying we want to present this opportunity to you where you have got access to infrastructure. Mm. Um, you can be able to mm. respond to tenders, whether they are ours or anybody else's for that matter. We would like to make sure that you, you, you have what you need. You have boardrooms for those professional meetings that you would like to have. You have access to, to printing without stressing about, um, mm. you know, whether the internet cafe that you typically use is closed or not. So it is really about saying, we would like to present this opportunity to you so that you, you worry about your customers. You worry about, you know, strategically where you're taking your business forward instead of worrying about whether you will have electricity to be able to print or not. So uh, <clears throat> do you, is there a specific number that you're recruiting for or is open-ended depending on your budget and we'll talk about your budget next. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we, we're hoping to, at least for this initial period, to take about 15 uh, small businesses. This does not mean that that is where we'll stop. Uh, we're, we're looking at having new intake again um, in the next year. Um, so that will be probably in January, we'll probably have another group that will take, but this initial period will take 15. Great, so that question, the budget. <laughs> <laughs> so so let, let, let us just say for now the budget is in the millions but what is critical for us it's not this is not about spending money sometimes people have got this idea that um, the corporates are doing the work that they're doing just so that they can be able to spend money and get the points we, we focused on ensuring that the development that the small businesses need is actually achieved. So mm -hmm. we will ensure that, you know, we provide the necessary to, to, 
to create the success levels that we're looking for within these businesses that we'll take. So the budget is um, it's, it's more in the millions than in the hundred thousands, mm -hmm. but yeah, let's not say what the number is. Good, I'm happy with that. I still like the number million sounds good enough for me. I don't, I don't need to, or the word millions does not have to have numbers before it. I'm, I'm okay with millions. Yeah. And I'll tell you why for me, uh, your program makes sense and why, why I, I would support it. I've always been a critic of uh, what people call, you know, enterprise and supply development. And they train people and train people and they train them until they, the, 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 the sun sets again and again and again, but they, they don't provide the market. But you are providing training to people from whom you're going to buy services and products. And that for me is what I call acceleration. That's what it, development is all about. Yeah, I think, I think for us, it is critical. We've, we've always said that at, at Sasol we take transformation very seriously. So we, we've gone and we looked at where we possibly had some gaps. And one of the gaps was when we were open, uh, when you're talking about the program from 2016, we were more open, we'll take, you'd go to the SBI and we'll say, okay, do you meet A, B, C, and D, and then we'll take you. But we had to take a step back and we said, is that effective? Uh, we found that it could be more effective if we looked at what are some of those things that are important for us? What are the services that are important for us? Um, it does not help us to, uh, with all due respect to caterers, it doesn't help us to be running program that is just focused on caterers or grass cutters or whatever, but it is in as much as those services are critical and important in, 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 the, in the landscape of what we're looking at. We also had to say, what are some of those difficult areas that we want to um, create opportunities in? We're not guaranteeing that out of the program, you will actually get into Sasol. We are yeah. hoping that you will run a good enough um, enterprise when we are done with you, that you can compete effectively with, with what is available on our supply chain. So we looked at what are some of those areas where there are opportunities where we could maybe do with a little bit more of um, the smaller businesses and uh, that are black owned. And um, we identified these opportunities and we thought, let's just rather focus on those instead of going through the hundred commodities that Sasol normally needs from mm. a purchasing point. So I, uh, I, 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 I was you know, told to send a few pointer questions to you, but I, I should have warned your people that people who watch this show also ask questions themselves. So our viewers are asking questions. The first yeah. question comes from the global uh, business connector on uh, Instagram, and he says, how is the performance and sustainability of these incubators measured? Um, so we are looking at, um, obviously, um, it will be depend on the technical scope. Remember now we've opened up in terms of, uh, let's say engineering services. So depending yeah. on what exactly you're looking at at the engineering services. So we'll sit down with you and we say that what are some of those critical gaps within your business? Remember I said, it's not about a, this is what we have to meet and tick. It's about what is it that your business needs to achieve and mm -hmm. how do we ensure that what you want to achieve against what could be, let's call it the qualifiers on our side. How is that journey going for you? So every three months, we're gonna sit down with the SMEs to look at on the basis of the gaps that we identified within your business, how far are you growing? This mm -hmm. will include some mm -hmm. of our technical people within the company who will assess on the basis of what they typically looking for for that particular service. And then, um, and obviously, I mean, we're hoping to see some growth um, with the defined milestones that we will have within that particular program. I'm sure you would appreciate that we cannot have the same criteria or the development path for somebody who's in the recyclables or somebody who's doing HVAC versus somebody who is doing um, engineering maintenance. So it's got to be specific and the growth will be measured taking into account what our requirements are within that particular commodity. One of the things I like about entrepreneurs is that they're also opportunists. You know, yes. and, and that's what makes an entrepreneur. If you're not opportunistic, then we have a problem. And one such entrepreneur has to be uh, Nix Majafela Mabuso, who asked on Facebook, he starts by com complimenting you. He says, great initiative by Sasso Big Ups. Then he says his question. What are the business opportunities available currently in the COVID space, uh, meaning masks, sanitizers, and disinfectants? 
Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, the timing is, um, is, is not on his side. So with Sasol, we actually pivoted a business that was in, involved in, in fuels um, space. It's a small business there in Sasobek. They um, were supplying, they were receiving fuel from um, their restaurant franchises and um, they were recycled and they supplied as biofuels. And obviously they were affected by, by uh, COVID. And um, so we saw this as a great opportunity for them. We turned them around. They are now supplying our hand sanitizers. They produce, so it's, we're not talking about buying from somebody else. They, they use produce. our chemical. They use our chemical raw material. They produce. They supply to us as Sasso and um, or basically hand sanitizers. We're not using only not only for mm -hmm. ourselves, but in terms of you may have seen on social media, the um, the donations that Sasso is making on hand sanitizers that is coming from an SMME. That is in mm -hmm. Sasso. That is manufacturing. So, so that opportunity, unfortunately, is gone because we have to make sure that we drive sustainability and therefore we cannot cut the cake too thin. The second one on the face cloth masks, we are um, engaging SMEs that are 14 from the different sites. Uh, Sasso will be giving face cloth masks to its own employees. Mm -hmm. Um, we are using SMEs. We are using SMEs in Sasolbeck. We've got three of them in Sasolbeck. We've got two in Johannesburg. We've got two in Ekandastria. We've got um, SMEs in Sekunda. So uh, like we say, we have to start at home and, and, um, and we are giving those opportunities to SMEs. Well, Nix, I think you and I must relocate to Sasolbeck, my brother. I think the only way we're gonna get a slice of this cake is when, if we move a bit south of Johannesburg. Uh, one last question from the global business uh, connector and I'm telling you I'm scared about this question but I'm going to ask you the question and leave it in your hands he says what percentage of procurement will be afforded to these SMEs once they have been accelerated um, so as I, as I had mentioned we <clears throat> the intention is not to guarantee any work um, but I think that uh, what you need to understand is that this is um, the cake is big you know, in, in if you're looking at the engine. I like that. Space, I like that. Say it again. I like that. So, Sounds good. Yes, it's it's not it's not a it's, it's not a small cake. So we have not said this is how much we're gonna restrict them to. We have said let's first understand which industries the SMEs are responding from. And on those bases, we will make sure that we develop them so that they can competitively participate in our supply chain. Um, and how far they grow will really depend on the service offering that they are presenting to the organization. The idea is not to um, develop entitled SMEs. The idea is to develop SMEs that can compete within SASO, within all our big other companies that are in the different areas and that can stand on their own. So the, really the focus is about saying, we would like to give you everything that you need for you to be able to be a a good organization and you're not selling being a black SME, but actually mm. you are selling a company that is offering a quality product. One last question for me, perhaps it's a double question is how do they then apply these SMEs to get into the accelerator program and when is the closing date? Yeah. Mm. So we would like them to go to www.sasol.com um, and they will be able to click on the link there, which will basically guide them in terms of um, what they need to do. The closing date is the 12th of June, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then yeah. after once it has closed, we will go through a very rigorous process to select the companies. They will have to, drop, to at least jump three hoops um, um, for us to be able to, we have to be comfortable that these are people that are serious in terms of what they're doing. And, and we are really just meeting them halfway, but they have to do their part. And uh, when will the program start? I know, that, I know we're still dealing with, uh, with lockdowns and stuff, but ideally, when are you looking at starting? We are looking at starting um, by the end of um, July. Um, so obviously, depending on the logistics, because you know, as you say, it's it's um, the COVID is preventing is, is creating a lot of problems for us. With this, it's a, it's an unknown, so we don't know how 
people are going to be able to respond and whether they would be able to respond through the way we would like to. For instance, we expect people to submit videos um, as an initial um, selection um, where they tell us about their businesses. I think it does say on the on the SASO video in terms of what we're expecting. So depending on how that is going and um, we're hoping that we will by the end of, as I say, by mid-July would have completed the process for us to be able to, by the end of July, start in the program. Well, I, 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 I can tell you that I speak for a lot of people when I say this is an amazing program. We're very grateful for what Sasul is doing. For those SME that are going to benefit from this, I hope they outgrow you very fast and they go become big everywhere else and they create employment because yes. when they do that, then they make it very easy for others to come in. Uh, in the next program. So thank you very much for, for this. I wish you guys all the best. And just know that this platform will always be available for you to tell us more about other programs you do for SMEs, only for SMEs, you don't interest yeah. other people. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity. We are hoping that we will have uh, SMEs that are really serious about taking advantage of this opportunity. Uh, we have tried to go far and wide in creating visibility to this opportunity that is available and hope that we will uh, reward it accordingly by people that are serious about running their businesses. So thank you for your time and thank you for the opportunity given. Thank you very much and have a great evening, Pedro. Thank you. Well, folks, there it is. I know most of you are probably, you know, in Johannesburg or in other places, but go tell somebody else in Sasselbeck. In that part of the world, it will benefit someone. I, I ask you to please do that. So I'm going to end with a bit of a rant. What is wrong with us? So this fellow gets a 110 million rent tender from the housing government to supply PPEs, and he buys five luxury cars. That's not all. Then he goes to flaunt them. People are there in their cameras and showing off these cars and like, but what's wrong with us? I mean, I have no problem with the guy getting the tender if he's going to be a good supplier. I actually even don't have a problem with him buying five cars of 20, actually I do. But let's say I don't have a problem with that. But why flaunt all this? Why do, why do we do this? What's wrong with us? And this is my fear about what we do because you know, again, these companies that may be beneficiaries of this Sasol program, this beautiful program, may tomorrow start getting big contracts from Sasol and other companies, and they start doing the same. What is wrong with us? We, we really need to check ourselves. I was so livid when a journalist from News24 last week brought out this thing and, and, I, and I felt like, you know, they questioning black success. But when it came out that this guy is making his money from tenders, and even before the money is paid, he's ordering five luxury cars. I was not happy. And I am seriously disappointed. I think we can and we should do better. But thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Thank you very much for your questions and your comments. We see them all, we love them all. We back tomorrow evening, 7.30 p.m. as usual on three platforms. Instagram TV, Facebook Live, and YouTube. I beg you again to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on the other channels, Facebook and Instagram. From me, Rems Mabote, good night and God bless.